Welcome back to Girls Guide to Germany. And today we are missing the other girl guide to Germany, Christy, but today we have Christina. <laughs> we have another Christy. <laughs> another Christy. <laughs> This episode is going to be something that's always asked in our EBA community. How to get a job in Germany, the million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> the million dollar question, how to get a job in Germany. So if you don't know already, Girls Guide to Germany is a podcast made for anyone who's wanting to come to Germany and haven't been here for a long time or really want to get the bite-sized information of how to succeed and thrive in Germany. And this is from the BBA community, which Christina is also a part of. BBA community is one of the biggest communities for ambitious international women in Germany. And yeah, we're really excited about this topic today because this is often asked in our WhatsApp group, almost weekly, <laughs> daily, <I> would say. <laughs> but we're going to focus on not just how to get a job in Germany, but how to get an English job in Germany. So let's start with our first questions. Maybe, Christina, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Christina. I'm originally from Venezuela. I have like half of German roots and uh, I'm living in Hamburg since 2017. I've been working in HR, in recruiting uh, the past years. And also right now I'm a career mentor. So that's why Hannah told me to explain a little bit about the German market, the tips and tricks uh, behind the scenes and uh, to help you get a job in Germany. Yes, and I'm really interested about these tips too because I've been self-employed for two years and I did have a job in Germany for eight years as an event marketing manager. And I am questioning myself if I want to go back to the job market just because self-employment is a daily struggle, daily hustle. <laughs> But so this will be very interesting for me because maybe things have changed in the last two years I've been self-employed. So let's go to the first question. Where to find jobs in Germany? with an English language requirement. And this doesn't mean fully English, like a lot of jobs in Germany are English focused, but they want you to have, you know, like a B1 German mm. or at least know the basics. Where can you find jobs in <laughs> Germany that are English oriented? Exactly. The first um, step would be to open, a, it depends on the sector, but to open a LinkedIn profile if you don't have it, because LinkedIn is the widest spot To, to search for a, an international job and also allows you to network a lot. So to research about the market, the trends, the titles that they use in Germany, for example. And uh, of course, it's Google, search for a job. Mm -hmm. on Google, um, I don't know, digital marketing manager and Google, uh, English speaking jobs. There are also several groups on LinkedIn, like uh, English jobs in Germany. Um, It's also a website, English also, jobs in Germany. Also the My Expat, for example, they have a job board. The BBI community has a WhatsApp group, for example. <laughs> Uh, we try to, to put a lot of input there. The focus here is to network. I think I, I know it's difficult because if you are an introvert and you come to a, a new country and you don't know anybody but your family or your boyfriend or whatever, it's the first step that you have to achieve, like network. Also job boards like Indeed, Join, Sync, they are more or less German oriented, but you can get lucky. I found um, my yeah. first English job on Indeed. You can get lucky, for example, on Join. Uh, there is also another platform, Instafo. It's uh, relatively new. And they have a WhatsApp a chat. And they're very personal. Mm. So it's like a one-to-one, -one, more or less, job search. Mm -hmm. So you put your profile there, your uh, requirements, and they offer you the best match And do you have to for pay you. for that? No. No. Oh, no. Interesting. Um, with Indeed, actually, and a lot of the jobs, job boards, what helped me and still what helps me is that I was subscribed to daily notifications from the job boards. So... Anytime there was a job posted with English as a keyword, <laughs> I put English in English, English in German, and I get a daily like email. And that's how I found one of my jobs, actually, because exactly. I was just like, English. And I was like, I don't care what it is. I just need English. I'll <laughs> make it fit. I'll make it work. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have more or less all of the job postings have English mm -hmm. inside their uh, description. But totally English focused, you have to be very careful about the keywords. Mm -hmm. um, you have to create alarms in all of that platforms, join indeed sync linkedin uh, i think it's the the go-to um and also headhunters for doctors for nurses for example they have like targeted headhunters or agencies for those positions of course they need the german mm -hmm. part but it's also a good way to start 
And would you say with a headhunter, we get asked in the WhatsApp group quite often, hey, does anyone know a headhunter or a recruiter that I can contact to find a job for me? Is that actually something that people do? Or would you need to be like a pretty senior person? No, I think the headhunter term, it's like uh, you think that you have to earn more than 100K or something mm -hmm. like that. But it's not like that. You have a lot of agencies in Germany, a lot of headhunters, and they work with English speakers because mm. I work in a small agency, a startup in the tech field. And we had a few, not like a lot, but a few tech jobs in Hamburg or in Germany with English, only English. So okay. that's a good way to start to, to search for headhunters, agencies mm. that, of course, take your job description or match um, or your field and ask them. And you can send the CV or apply online. Mm. You don't have to talk to anybody mm. <laughs> or hunt anybody. I always like online applications. <laughs> but yeah, you have the possibility to search for someone there, network mm. or ask uh, if they have a, a job for yeah. you. So don't be afraid. So once you start applying for jobs, maybe you found that amazing English job and you're like, this is it. I got to get this job. How would you optimize your CV so it's adaptable to the German recruiting systems? Yeah, the, that's a two million dollar question. <laughs> No, the CV in Germany has to be very short, very mm -hmm. precise, like um, two pages, three pages, two pages mm -hmm. maximum, I would say. For example, you are a project manager and you did amazing projects in the past. Mm -hmm. Put them on your CV, put KPIs, put keywords that and, adapt uh, to the job that you are applying for. So for instance, I was an event marketing manager. So I just redid my CV mm -hmm. and I put in the job description from my previous job, was able to input 100 marketing leads after X event. Is that something that would be considered yeah. like a good um, KPI? KPI, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very corporate. Yeah. No, <laughs> no um, but... It's in, it's like your CV is your profile, your short description. Mm -hmm. You have to sell yourself in a good way and a smart way. And it's very important to present yourself as good as it gets, so to say, or as precise as it gets, because mm -hmm. a recruiter often gets like 100 CVs uh, per day mm -hmm. or 200 or maybe two. But you have to get time to read everybody and in like five seconds get a profile okay. from and your candidate. Is it good to have the um, summary at the top? I would say it's very good because the summary, very precise with the good keywords and experience, is like elevator pitch. One more question on this. What is the main difference between a US or like North American resume and a German CV? Because some people don't know the differences. The German CV, I would say it's more based on experience and not the big uh, companies. Mm -hmm. Because in Germany, uh, sometimes, of course, it depends on the sector, but more or less the recruiters or the companies are focused on your experience mm -hmm. and not if you work there, here, there. Of course, that gives you like a brand or a, like a certain um, experience or achievement, but it's not like corporate America, I would say, that it's more about the brand or the company that you work for. Mm -hmm. Here is more about what you can do, what mm -hmm. you did and when you can do and what you can bring to the new role and, and to the company. And it's important, I've heard, to have no gaps. So you can't have a gap in your resume. And that's why it's more important about your experience because I've seen people put like life orienteerung, <laughs> Leben orienteerung, one, six months, meaning they just went on like a sabbatical or something. Exactly. I would put like sabbatical yeah. and I would put what you learned in that period mm -hmm. because you could do some startup or self-employment mm -hmm. or um, travel and you could learn something thing about it it's yeah. not the lost time and you could put everything like what you learned there mm -hmm. i would put of course or in room or like the true mm -hmm. because i'm very true oriented as a recruiter and as a hr person mm -hmm. and say i had a kid i had a family i had uh, orientation i changed my career mm -hmm. that's nothing to be afraid of i would say but you have to explain mm -hmm. what you did that's very very important to explain to have a background about it and to see the positive part of that period. Yeah, and I think that's something that's different on an 
North American resume is that you wouldn't put something like that. You just put the jobs where you worked and everything like this. Exactly. Here it's more about the experience. true the experience and what are you looking for. One thing that we had a quick discussion before this was putting your address on this TV. Definitely we need your photo. We know that. But your address... For me, it's a bit old school because also like GDPR, like I don't want my address going out to hundreds of people looking at my CV, but sometimes you do need this. Sometimes it's better to just put your location, right? I would put the maybe the zip code mm -hmm. and location. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking for a remote job in Germany, that's not necessary. Not a, necessary. So it depends. Like if you're applying for a cafe in Eimsbüttel, maybe. Exactly, and you have to <laughs> be like around yeah. five, 10 kilometers on that area. Yes, mm -hmm. maybe. And in the end of the day, if you get a job and a contract, your address is going to be there. But in the application process, I wouldn't put it like your address. Of course, your phone, your email address, and the email address has to be very formal, mm -hmm. <laughs> more or less. Not like 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 a uh, hot girl. Hot girl, 95, hot girl, nineteen ninety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I love pink. Yeah, nineteen ninety. Now my email used to be like pink and black, like. Really, Hannah? I was so cool. That goes into, like, we have the summary, but what about a cover letter? Is a cover letter super necessary in Germany? We were talking about that right now. The cover letter, it depends on the company. Mm -hmm. The bigger corporate companies, they want cover letters. Mm -hmm. Sometimes also middle-sized companies or startup because they want to get to know you and they want to get your motivation. If mm -hmm. you are a newcomer to Germany and you have to explain why are you here, what's your experience, planning to stay here one, two years, five years or forever, the recruiters or the companies want to know that. Mm -hmm. And that's why the cover letter, it's, I know it's a pain, <laughs> <laughs> but it's also a, a, another part of your presentation yeah it's like part of your portfolio your portfolio and, and you can put, you also need a portfolio exactly you can put like your yourself in in words okay you have to be spontaneous you can be everything and this was not on our main question list but it brought a good point because chat gbt a lot of people are depending on this to write their cvs and their cover letters what are some red flags like as a recruiter that you've seen at using chat gpt how can you instantly see that this was not written by a human because it's very accurate <laughs> like very very accurate and also because it doesn't have like a, a like a sense mm -hmm. of, of human like mm -hmm. like an essence of your of your person uh, you see a photo you see a profile you see a university you see yeah. an experience and you create as a recruiter a, a candidate persona with chat gpt maybe you see two three cvs with the same <laughs> structure of words and like okay <laughs> It could so be. I would, yeah, I would use it like as inspiration, inspiration, but also put a little bit of yourself in the in the CV and the the cover letter. Okay, because that's uh, that's you. Our next question is how to increase your reach in Germany and getting a job because a lot of people that are fairly new here, they don't know many people. Maybe they've never even had any European or German experience. So people, you know, I've had it before when I first moved here. People are like, how do I trust you? Because you didn't have a job in Germany before. Maybe how do I know you're not lying? Like, how do you gain trust from that? Like, get more people to talk about you, get people to trust your experience without having much experience or a big network in Germany. Exactly. That's a big, big point. Uh, I struggled with that also uh, mm -hmm. in the beginning. I had luck. Uh, I had a headhunter that believed in me and mm. changed my life, so to say, in Germany. <laughs> and I would say the first, now you have a lot of communities, a lot of networks, uh, events. BBA. In yeah, exactly, BBA. <laughs> uh, you, have, <laughs> you have afterworks and uh, I wish I had this things or events or communities in the past. When did you come to Germany? 2017. Okay, yeah. It was like, yeah, some here, some there, but not like, boom, after mm. Corona, I think they exploded and everyone wants to know everybody, mm. <laughs> so to say. And um, network is, I think, the best part because you can get a job and also you can get uh, referrals. That part is very important in, in Germany. The vitamin B in Germany, when you're finding a job, finding a flat. You need some good old vitamin B, not the stuff you put in your mouth, the metaphorical <laughs> one. Um, yeah, I think the referrals and the referral letters in Germany are very important. The real ones or the generated ones? Uh, no, not the real ones. 
Because <laughs> in Germany, when you leave a job, you'll get an Zeug Arbeitszeugnis, and it's like this automated, generated thing where someone just puts you like on like a program, like rate this from one to five. One will like print it out and give it to the next employer, but it's like so useless, I think, because you can't get a bad rating, and it's like secret language. But yeah. That's I think. important, of course, yeah. to build your portfolio in Germany. The first job, it's very difficult to get, but after that, it goes along the way. Yeah, that's one reason in the BBA WhatsApp group, we have a job posting group with, I think, over 400 people in it. And we're always like asking the girls in the chat to post jobs from their companies and refer each other. And I think it works pretty well. I think some people have even gotten interviews or jobs from that group. So, yeah. <laughs> I know that for a fact. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> One thing that we didn't talk about in the CV, and I think is also a touchy subject, is sometimes people put mar marital status in the CV. Mar marital. Mar 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 marital. <laughs> <laughs> their marriage status. Apparently, I cannot speak English today. Um, in their CVs. And that brings me to the topic. Many of us are in our 30s, and applying for jobs in Germany can be a little bit touchy topic because many recruiters or hiring managers are afraid afraid that we're just gonna pop out some babies and leave the company within a few months once we get the job and this is not untrue many women do this and it's not a bad thing this is just the natural way of life but many recruiters are then or hiring managers are scared of this and is it appropriate in a job interview in germany to ask someone this uh, i have experienced that not myself but with colleagues and that's not appropriate i would say maybe you can <laughs> pop the question like in the last interview but not the first one mm -hmm. i think it's not appropriate at all because it's only uh, it's a right to have babies and to grow your family mm -hmm. and that doesn't have to interfere with your experience what you can do what you can improve because it's like a year off to have a child exactly. doesn't mean you're going to forget everything and you are going to improve years. another skills <laughs> project management <laughs> like project management um <laughs> not to sleep yeah But yeah, I think that's also part of your life and it's an evolving part. But and it is, it is true though that some people will prefer men for positions because there's less of a risk of them leaving so short term. I would say, Jain. <laughs> Jain? You're like, not in my recruiting. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, also the parents or, or the, yeah, um, they, they are like 50-50. I have a good friend who had a baby. She took a year off and now it's the turn of the father. So mm -hmm. it's also the 50-50 quota, so mm -hmm. to say. Yeah, I mean, I was asked at a job interview, not even a job interview. I think I was already employed at a company and my manager asked me, Hannah, you've been together with your boyfriend for so long. You know this job requires a lot of travel and I think that's great for you, but are you going to have kids soon? Because that would be a real blocker. And I was like looking at this person like... I mean, if you have like this... <laughs> friendship so to say um your wasn't a friendship uh, it was just very like... long in the company okay <laughs> but uh, i don't think it's a good example because yeah. it's yeah it's it's part of the of the life i mean uh, if if you don't grow your family or have kids it's uh, we are going to end <laughs> But um, I think as an international woman living in Germany, and especially if you have that love story that many international women in Germany have, oh, I moved here for my boyfriend, or we got married, blah, blah, blah. I think this like if may be a red flag for some, re some recruiters because they think it's going to happen real quick or they think that you just want the job so you can live your fairy tale life in Germany. Life. <laughs> <laughs> Take all those benefits. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's a risk uh, mm. that you take as a recruiter or a company. I, as a woman and a, as a recruiter, I try to avoid those questions mm -hmm. because, uh, and also with colleagues, we try to avoid those questions because uh, it's very personal. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the first interview, no go, I would say. After that, maybe if you're negotiating, do you want to start i don't know in september and you're already pregnant <laughs> that's, yeah that's another another thing but um yeah i would say it's it's not you have to give the chance uh, mm -hmm. to everybody so yeah, why just, not 
I agree. Like, you know, even if that candidate is planning to start a family that year, they get the job, that doesn't mean when they come back, they're not going to do a good job too. Exactly. Another touchy subject, and this recently came up in our BBA community, is salary negotiation and what like an average salary is in Germany. Uh, we recently made a post from a sponsor of how to invest a 5k salary. And this stirred up a little bit of, I would say, interest and a little bit of maybe some people felt shame because they don't have a 5k salary yet. And I would just like to know what is like an average salary for a like professional woman in Germany that's maybe not German speaking. Is it true that people are usually getting lower salaries because of this? Sometimes, but it depends. For example, in tech, you can forget about salaries. <laughs> uh, like um, the yeah. high salary. <laughs> yeah, I can. I can. But tech um, is a great place to start. <laughs> I mean, if you are starting a new career in Germany mm -hmm. and you have zero experience in the market, you have to be very flexible about the salary ranges and, and the it's salary not like in the US. It's exactly. A lot, it's less. <laughs> it's less. And also, the companies are, some of them are putting the salary ranges in the job posting. So that could be a, a good uh, mark for you. But if you don't have the salary range and you have to calculate your costs, mm -hmm. what's the minimum that you could get to live? happily ever after in, in Germany yeah. for at least one year, maybe, because you also have the salary feedbacks and um, increases after the probation period, sometimes six months, one year you, you get uh, a salary raise, mm -hmm. maybe if you're good. It depends, of course. But to start looking for a job, you have to be very flexible because I've had that in the mentorships. You have a tech person uh, coming from the US from Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and of course the salaries are good here in Germany but not that good to but be they're much flexible. better than some other industries exactly it's definitely a great place exactly to have a good starting salary but for example this was in 2014 I worked at a startup company they had many employees I think it was a pretty big startup like maybe a five or six year old startup and I had an um, internship where my intern salary was 500 euros a month, which I think mm -hmm. is illegal now. And then eventually I got a full-time position as a team lead and my salary was uh, like just below 2,000 euros brutto what? per month. <laughs> Excuse me? I accepted me? this. But... Um, this was way too low. It also got me kicked out of the country, which uh, we I talked am. about on a previous episode. Um, but eventually, when I had like three years experience, I moved to another company and I got a salary around 40K. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it just kept going up. So I think I definitely don't think anyone should accept a salary below 40K. Exactly. Especially in 2024. But maybe like 40K is like a general place to start. Like 40, 40K, I would say it's the minimum for a professional like in the industry. Maybe if you're working at uh, retail, it's mm -hmm. more less. or less uh, 30, 20 something. Mm -hmm. It depends, of course. But in like normal office jobs or remote jobs or whatever, 40K is the less that you could take, yeah. I would say, to live. And that's actually good. to get a, a visa in Germany. Exactly. I think it's like 41k or something. Exactly. So this is a good place to start, but don't sell yourself short. If you have a lot of experience, especially from back home or you're you know already a senior professional and you're just coming to germany do not think that you have to take a 40k because that experience as you said the cv you have to sell yourself, yourself. <laughs> and your experience but i think many of my friends who work in marketing or uh, logistics or in international companies who have like five or six years experience are all sitting around 60 to 70 k exactly. at the moment i think for a senior professional it would say i would say 55 60 65 mm -hmm. 70 75 it depends of course yeah um but run about that um also what you can do before entering a uh, salary range is go to google mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, for example or those platforms glassdoor because you get like a round about how to expect from a salary range for that company mm -hmm. kununu uh, it's also another platform you get sometimes the the salary ranges for the company and um, also ask and network uh, maybe with other friends colleagues what they get but this is also a very touchy subject is salary um or maybe the ranges not like yeah the ranges. 
but actually like in canada um in the u.s telling people your salary is like telling people your rent here like people aren't afraid to tell you how much the rent is in germany but they're very much afraid afraid to tell you the salary and i only found out my best friend's salaries like i don't know after five or six years of knowing them it's like really like something that people keep very hush hush i think people are keeping salaries hush hush it's actually in favor of the companies because the companies they get to pay with everyone something different yeah so i think we should talk about these things more yeah yeah it depends of course you have the big companies corporate companies that are attached to uh um salary some, ranges or, yeah. or uh, some people have non-disclosure we're not allowed to do. exactly so it depends but uh, i would say the in general if you're looking for a job um, if you are in that process go to the internet search for the company the salary the position or maybe different positions and also ask uh, a little bit about the ranges we could talk about this for another hour forever <laughs> forever we will probably do a workshop or something with christina in hamburg or maybe another podcast episode next season is like getting the job like how to get a job in germany but like that's the first step is getting the applying finding the jobs mm. but like when it comes to interviews and oh everything like this this is a whole nother thing because the Let's approach is different yeah uh, it depends on the uh, culture of course of maybe the we can just say a quick thing with interviews what i've experienced is that in germany there's not just one or two interviews there's like five or six and you'll be talking to the hiring the recruiter the hiring manager different team members i even was invited to lunch once that was very but strange i but i i love <laughs> that i was like we're going for lunch <laughs> yeah it's very strange but i love that because you get the real feeling about the team or your future colleagues and you can say more or less i i match here or not mm -hmm. and more or less sense the vibe mm -hmm. uh, about the company the the culture that's for me for example very important also the sometimes projects the projects exactly the projects um they ask for case studies things like this exactly take a lot of time but this i think will be a whole another that's workshop <laughs> that's like landing the job but hopefully this was a very base overview of some different things in germany what to watch out for especially for women and we hope you liked this podcast so if you want to listen more of these podcasts be sure to subscribe to us on youtube or on spotify you can follow us on bba community underscore or my channel hannah teslin and do you have a um, channel you want to share or an email or something <laughs> my address now <laughs> your address and phone number <laughs> now you can find me on linkedin uh, christina without the h um very important romero dreaming uh, on linkedin i can um maybe help you find a, a good job in germany or at least give you some tips and tricks uh to find the job and not get frustrated in the process yes so we'll see you in the next episode and thanks for listening or watching bye adios <laughs>